Hello everyone, my name is Jamie and I'm a first year emergency medicine resident. Welcome to episode 2 of Ask Dr. Jamie. It's a series on my channel where I answer questions sent in by you guys. Today's question is from Danica. Danica asks, Hi Jamie, I'm sure you've heard that EM has one of the highest burnout rates. How did you navigate around this idea? And what is your advice for prospective EM doctors who fear the burnout? So let me address three things before answering this question. First, EM is emergency medicine and it's a specialty that I'm in. It's a medical specialty concerned with the acute care scenarios or injuries requiring immediate medical attention. Second, what is burnout? Burnout has been defined as long-term, unresolvable job stress that leads to exhaustion and feeling overworked, cynical, detached from the job, and lacking a sense of personal accomplishment. While burnout is prevalent in people working in healthcare, it can affect anyone from students, people in other professions, and even YouTubers. And the third thing I want to address is, Danica is probably referring to one of the many reports which show that EM specialty has one of the highest burnout rates. In 2017, almost 60% of the emergency medicine physicians that were surveyed reported that they were feeling burnt out. In 2018 and 2019, that number was 48%. That's basically one in two. Here's why burning out is an issue. Doctors who are burnt out are more likely to make medical errors. Not good. They tend to work less efficiently and being burnt out can lead to depression, substance abuse, and other serious consequences for not only themselves but for patients that they care for. So I'm about halfway done with my intern year and I'll be completely honest and say that there are times, sometimes a lot of times, where I do feel really burnt out. I would say the biggest cost for me is time. Everyone knows residency schedule is hard. I work 5 to 6 12 hour shifts per week and often my only one day off ends up being either transition day from night to days or a day when I need to get a bunch of errands done like laundry, doctor's appointments, making food, etc. Another big thing is what happens during the actual shift. This is especially true in emergency medicine where things are constantly happening 24 seven. I remember when I first shared my first month experience in a vlog and one of the challenges that I faced during work was working straight through my 12 hour shifts without bathroom break or lunch break. Um, as interns, for the most part, I'm working 12-hour shifts. Just starting out, I'm nervous and I'm excited, so I really haven't felt hungry. I really haven't thought about, oh, I want to take a break. So I've been going all 12 hours without taking not even a bathroom break, and I know that can be really unhealthy in the long run. My motivation then was that there are a lot of patients that needed to be seen in the emergency room, and I didn't want to keep them waiting. And I felt guilty for taking a break during work. Obviously, this isn't something that I can maintain long term. So I've been told that habits you build up as an intern and later as a senior resident are the habits that you live with as an attending. So for that reason, I've been trying really hard to advocate for myself and go take a break even if it's only for 15 to 20 minutes. Emergency rooms, especially in a busy city like New York, will never slow down. So unless there's something major going on, I try to find a good time to rest my mind for a few minutes and it really makes a big difference. So that's what I can do from my end. Hospitals and administration have some responsibility as well. According to a survey by Medscape, some of the reasons for physicians feeling burnt out include too many bureaucratic tasks like charting and paperwork, too many hours at work, lack of respect from coworkers and administration, and generally feeling lack of cog in a wheel. Now, let's talk about the workload of a physician. According to AAMC, 25% of doctors are expected to retire within the next 10 years, while the population of people who need healthcare will double. So that means there will be less physicians for more patients. We can expect the workload for physicians to continue to increase, and so will the rate of burnout. And despite this, up until 2010, the number of doctors entering the workforce has stayed consistent. So about 15,000 for MDs and about 3,000 for DOs. But it's not all bad news. There are efforts being made to target the increasing need for healthcare providers. Recent legislation, specifically Resident Physician Shortage Reduction Act, plans to add more than 15,000 residency spots between the years 2019 to 2023. So with all that said, I think we can still safely say that we probably won't be seeing any major administrative changes for a while. For the foreseeable future, workload will still be very heavy and there will always be more patients. So how do we personally deal with feeling burnt out? Here's my advice on dealing with burnout, hopefully even before it starts to happen. First and foremost, Make sure you're going into a specialty that you really enjoy. This may take some soul searching and choosing your specialty as a medical student is one of the most important decisions that you make. So make sure you talk to all your residents, your attendings, and think about what you like and don't like about each of your rotations. Second, have your go-to ways to decompress and process your hard day at work. This may come in the form of journaling or drawing, talking to your partner or friends, getting a good workout in, 
I do some combination of all of the above and I really try not to keep anything bottled in or unprocessed. Explicitly think about what makes your job worth it and why you enjoy what you do. I once heard this podcast about how emergency medicine physicians sometimes have a hard time being on the receiving end of patient's gratitude. Maybe it's because of the constant patient flow or maybe because our patients are constantly trying to either leave the hospital or be moved to a different part of the hospital, aka not in the emergency room. But patients do appreciate the work that we do, so if they come up to you to say thank you, take a moment to receive their thanks and be proud of the work that you've done for the patient. Last but not least, expect long hours but strive for better work-life balance. It's almost impossible to have any kind of control over your schedule as a resident, much less as an intern, but there are ways to make your time really count. One important thing to do is to advocate yourself on and off your shift. Make sure you give yourself a break and go eat and go to the bathroom. And when you're home, try to think about what would make you feel most rested and fulfilled, whether that's going to the gym or just watching TV at home or meeting up with your friends for a quick dinner. With 12 hour shifts, you can probably only pick one of these things, but make a conscious decision to pick something for yourself and know that you have the power to make the most of your free time. So that's all I have for today's question. I hope you guys found it helpful. And if you wanna submit your question for this series, you can do so by emailing me or DM me on Instagram at the strive to fit. Thank you guys for watching. And if you haven't already, please subscribe down below so you never miss an upload. You can also follow me on Instagram or Twitter at the strive to fit. And if you wanna support the channel, please go to strive to fit.com for some merchandise. Check out other videos by clicking over here and I will see you guys next time. Bye.